Hello everyone, Skipper T here. Today I want to go over the Sterno Single Burner Camp Stove. Probably the most underrated camp stove out there. Um, as you've seen in one of my previous videos, I have the, the Solo Stove. Absolutely wonderful, burns super hot, takes very little material to make a hot fire, to boil water, or to cook up a can of beans, whatever the case may be. But this little dude, for anywhere from about $7 to $9.5 on Amazon, sometimes you can get them at Walmart for about 7 bucks. this has got to be one of the most underrated pieces of camp equipment that's out there. It folds up, folds down into nothing. I mean, it just looks quite literally comes right apart, folds together. I should say it goes like this, rather and folds down into nothing okay super lightweight it's aluminium aluminum in america uh could even be tin that's out there it simply comes back apart folds out into this huge monstrosity but then all you do is you take it there's some little little spots on the sides here where the sides go in and it connects they're little cutouts i hope you can see those right in there and then these bottom parts just fit right down inside. Kind of helps if you do it all at the same time. They slide right down into place. Kind of locks right down, if you will. And the sides kind of have these, this back side has a little groove that it fits in. A little popping on either side. Taking your time will really help out tremendously with that. The bottom sits here. You can actually, it's got a place down inside here where you can set your sterno can. And then it's got a bar in the back that it sets on. You can close the front here to control the amount of air that comes in and around, concentrating the heat on whatever you're cooking. I'm not a fan of sterno. So what I've done was I've taken just a thin sheet of metal. And I'll put this where you guys can see it here. I've drilled a few holes in it. Um... I cut a notch in the front here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that little V notch I've cut in. And what that does is takes these two holes here and aligns them with the two little posts that are down inside here where the sterno can sits. So that way you can insert this in here, set it in there, and it rests on those little pieces that, that catch the bottom. Now you've got a stove that'll still close, plenty of ventilation holes, but now, you can use this to cook or to uh, rather burn wood. Now what I've done is I've prepared a couple of fire sticks. I've just taken some fat wood. Just did a feather stick type scenario on these two here to see if we can get it started. I've taken a few shavings that came off in the curling process there. I'm going to try putting those down here in the center. Preferably not right over top of the holes. Then I'm just going to carefully put my two pieces of fat wood kind of right up on top. Probably crisscross them a little bit here, get a little more surface area. And then we're going to see if we can take our ferrocium rod that you've seen me demonstrate previously. And I'm going to use the Good old fashioned habilis bush tool. Never leave home without it. And we'll see if we can get a little fire started. It's a bit cool today, so I'm gonna put my gloves on and let's see if we can get a fire started here. This might be a little too high, who knows? Okay, one of my other all-time favorite things to start a fire with is dryer lint. So let's see if we can fluff that up a little bit. Get that down in there. Maybe put the fire stick right on top. And let's see if we can do this again. Let's see if we can get this started here. Oh, 
moment I knew where I put my first thing in my Found the Phariseum run. Let's see if we can try this again. Get this back in there a little bit. It has engaged the fat wood. Perfect. Depending on the conditions, one may have to do a lot of different things to get a fire started. Now, the other day, I had made a couple of mallets. One was round, one was square. Oops. And these are the shavings that came off of those. So I think we're just going to break those down, put them on top, see if we can't get just a regular old wood fire going here. My objective is to take a 20 ounce cup and see if we can boil up a hot cup of tea. I keep old plastic um, peanut butter jars. I love tea when I'm out camping. Um, I'll keep a smaller one filled with sugar. Looks like we might have to have to redo that one a little bit. But let's see if we can get a nice hot fire burning. Maybe turn that around a little bit here. The nice thing about this particular stove is that you can put some much larger pieces of wood in it. It's also got a nice opening on the top where you can drop things down through up here there's one two three bars and then one two three bars here but in the center there's a couple inch gap that allows one to put larger pieces of wood in there so we're going to put some of this in see if we can get a nice hot fire and since it appears as though we've got quite a bit of wind i'm going to head, go ahead and close this door up a little bit that way all the heat just tends to stay right inside here where it should be. Now that's nice and tight up in there. Again, I can slide my little cup off to the side here. I can drop in some more firewood, which I'm in the process of doing. Get a nice hot fire going. Looks like most of the heat wants to come out of the front, so I'm going to put it up here like that. And now we're just going to see if we can boil the water here. In fact, I might spin that around and put it over the hotter part of the fire here. Nothing like a little soot on the bottom of your camping gear. That just lets you and everybody else know that it's being used. I'm going to set that off to the side just a little bit. Got another piece. I'm just going to feed it in towards the back side here. Now, there's lots of vents holes all the way around. You notice on that little square, I drilled a bunch of holes. That way, air can come in underneath. The nice thing about that little plate on the bottom is it holds the coals in. If you're in an environment where there's a high fire hazard or something, that would be a great way to ensure um, that you're not going to spread a fire around or at least help prevent an unwanted forest fire. Now I've got a stick here. I don't know if you can see that, but I've cut a little notch out in it. And then what I was going to do was use it to... Um, you know, I can lift the lid, I can lift the pot. Actually, the cup and bottle set that you see here is the Pathfinder set. Inside, wrapped up in a, another bandana, just another source of cotton dry material, I have the fish mouth spreader, which is designed specifically to go into this pot so that you can put like a little bale on it. I think I'll spread that out just a touch further. Give it a little more tension on it. There we go. Now that can just stand up there like that. And when I'm ready to pull off, I can just connect it to my little stick and carry it. That way I don't have to rely on those handles not being too hot to grab a hold of. And it'll stay there just like that. That also fits inside the mouth of this 
32 ounce stainless steel bottle and would allow you to do the same thing to boil the water if you were disinfecting water it would be like such and you'd be able to pick this up and set it up off the side of the fire that way one does not burn their hands grabbing a hold of you know piping hot metal so we're gonna see how long this takes to boil got a nice little fire going in there it's been on about two minutes it's 13.45, so we'll just give that and say that that's been on there for a few minutes, maybe three or four. Okay, it's 13.55. You should be able to see then that we have got one rolling boil going on. That is about perfect. Just perfect. So now I think what I'll do warm my hands a little. Get out my tea bag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid back on. And as it has these cutouts on it, I'm going to put the bag right through there. That way I don't have to worry about this thing catching on fire. Move this back up. Then I'm just going to let that seep for a few minutes. That's nice with those cutouts on there. Because then I don't have to worry about that catching fire. I'm going to move this to the back side of the fire here. And just to give you an idea how stable that is, it's just amazing. All the way around, I've got all this extra room. In fact, while that's plenty hot enough, I'm going to go ahead and just let that kind of cool off for a little bit and make that. But one of the other things I wanted to show you was I have multiple um, camping gear. This is an old military pot. Sits on there perfectly. You can make your, what, your scrambled eggs. You can do all kinds of things with that one. Fits right on there just like a dream. The other one I have is my tried and true and trusty Boy Scout. Slide the handle back off. I do not have the plastic cup in here, so fear not. But with the handle on that, again, this will fit on there. These are probably six, maybe seven inches in diameter. This thing would easily hold a 10 inch pan. Um, eight inch would be no problem at all. 10 inch would be more than doable on something like this. And it's just stable. You know, that is just the beautiful thing about this is that you can use it for so many different applications. Now that the fire, we're done with the fire, we can open this up. We can let a little extra air in there. We can bump this around a little bit. Let those coals work their way down. In fact, I can just pick the whole thing up. Did burn a little bit of a hole in the, from the heat in the top of my stump here, but that's more than acceptable. We got this up here. Go ahead and take these off since we don't really need them to pull it off of the fire. Wipe off some of the soot from around the edge here because that's probably where I'm going to be drinking from. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my titanium spoon. Get the rest of that out of there. Just push down on it. I'd like to get as much tea in as I can. Dump that bag a few times. Put it around. Squeeze all that last little bit of goodness out of there. I'm going to add a little sugar, probably more than most people do because, well, there's some debate as to whether or not I'm sweet enough. Plus, this is a 20-ounce cup. Get that all stirred up nicely. Our fire's burning down nicely, as we can see. Nothing but a few little coals left. 
It won't take very long before those are all done. We'll be able to just discard the whole thing. Get a couple fingers in. Let's see how the tea is. Oh, hot, 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 but good, good, good. Oh, nothing like a fresh cup of tea over an open fire. But again, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Sterno single burner camp stove. And I have to tell you, I'm extremely impressed with how well that works, how stable it is, but more than anything else, how very inexpensive this is as a piece of bushcrafting outdoor equipment. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this since the winds are still blowing a little bit. In fact, I may dump the ashes in my fire pit. But I just wanted to give you a demonstration. Even on a cold, windy day, a little bit of mist and rain going on. And just so you guys know, it's 37 degrees. I'll bring that up into the camera view here so that you can see that. So this is not a bad little stove. It tends to work great. I mean, you know, it just, it's solid as can be. I tell you what, for five, anywhere from about seven to nine dollars, and I think it's 30 cents or something on Amazon, you can't go wrong with one of these in your EDC, your bug out bag, heck, just lightweight backpack camping. A couple of cups like this, you'd be good to go, nice and warm when you're out in the field. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you out in the woods.